Egunone. Buenos días. So you've heard a lot about Industry 4.0, and then here I come and I talk about Industry 5.0. And uh, I'm going to talk about Industry 5.0 and the challenges it brings for the vocational education and training. Industry 5.0 has been launched by the European Commission as a new challenge for European companies. European companies need to become human-centric, more resilient, and more sustainable. And this is a major challenge, and these are things that have not been addressed up to, up to now. But it's also a challenge for the vocational and educational uh, system. I myself am working on the project Beyond 4.0, and as you can read in the title, it's about what is over the edge of industry 4.0. So when the European Commission this year came with the idea, Industry 5.0, they were really in line with what we were, we were suggesting to the European Commission. I'm not only talking for the, for the Beyond 4.0 project, but also for the Gini project, which is aligned here, and my colleagues are in present in, in the audience, so I'm happy that they are here. And if we are talking about Industry 5.0 and we want to understand the challenges, we also need to understand the challenges for uh, the vocational education uh, training system. And so let me start with the um, a talk that I had two weeks ago with a, uh, a CEO of a Dutch uh, industrial company, a really fascinating company that has been growing 25% per year over the past 25 years. And this uh, company, they told me, well, if we want to keep up this growth uh, for the next 25 years, we need the graduates that come from the, the vocational and educational training system with a totally different mindset. If we want growth, and we talk to these students and these graduates today, they have the wrong mindset. They come with the idea that their diploma, th that they're finished. Their opportunities, their potential is realized. And that's a hard case for companies that want to change and want to develop into new things. The second wrong idea that they have is that they think that companies in which they are stepping in are hierarchies. And that a career is a competition and that they have to fight against their colleagues to move up in the world. And this is a hard mindset for companies that want to develop new things each day. What kind of mindset do they require from these uh, students, uh, from these graduates? The first is that their diploma is a starting point, it's a departure to develop the potential which is, in the eyes of this company, unlimited. And they need this unlimited perspective because the technologies that the company is launching each year for this 25% of growth, they are not there. The things that we've heard yesterday, those are already there. But what this company is doing is developing technologies which are not there. And they need this potential of these students and these graduates to help the company grow. The second is they need to understand that not only the student has a T-shaped profile, so very strong in, in technical uh, knowledge, but also understanding of the systems in, in companies. But the company itself is T-shaped. It's not a hierarchy. It's flat. And uh, as, a, as a graduate for this company, if you come in, the, the main thing that you have to do is push the incumbents to develop themselves to, be, to, to become better. Because these graduates, and I think we've just had this uh, very nice experience from uh, uh, what is happening in Ivy Tech, they know the latest technologies. So they can learn those that are uh, the incumbents in the companies to move on and develop themselves even further. Yeah. So I said this uh, company is growing 25% per year over the 25 uh, years that they, they live. 
But what they also do is every, every student, every, pers uh, every person in the company receives free schooling, uh, uh, free training to develop themselves even further. And at a yearly base, about 8% of those uh, uh, of the personnel is in a new diploma track. 8% per year. They are uh, uh, funded completely by the, the company to develop themselves even further than they are when they come into the company. So, this is, um, uh, I think, uh, an inspiring uh, example. Uh, the question is, what does it mean for education and training? Um, and the question is, is this just one example, just one exception in, in, in the world of technology today? Well, let us uh, look at some data from uh, Eurofound. Uh, Enrique was here, he's worked at Eurofound, so he knows this uh, information uh, quite well. The Euro Eurofound has, uh, is a, a European agency doing research uh, to understand what is happening in the companies and work, se work settings. And they've uh, conducted, the, uh, in 2019, the European Company Survey. 30,000 companies in Europe, also Spanish companies, they try to understand what they're doing. And they created this, 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 uh, this understanding that companies uh, can invest a lot into their personnel, into training, into pay, into opportunities, but they also can uh, invest a lot into involvement of the employees. So if you have this two dimensions, then you can have four kinds of company settings uh, to understand which kind of companies uh, are there in Europe. So you, uh, um, so you have the low-low type of companies. And this, 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 these quadrants also help to understand that there's uh, something like language that you use in your company and the practice. And language and practice should be aligned. But if you're in the low-low uh, kind of situation, it means companies do not invest into you. You get there, they pull out your knowledge, if you don't uh, uh, deliver more productivity, they throw you out. Well, pr personally, I would not like to be in that kind of situation, but th these kind of type of companies do exist. You'd rather be in a company where there is high involvement and also high investment. And uh, these companies do exist, and the example that I've given, I think, is one of those examples. But you also have uh, two other types. You have the companies where they do invest a lot, but they don't, don't have a vision. They do not have a story for the employee to, to follow. It's also a bit complicated because th there are all these systems, but you do not know for what you're doing all these uh, trainings and development. And then there's a fourth type of company in which they say a lot. They talk about this change and all these new technologies, but they do not invest in, into that. So there are four types of companies. Interesting distinction. The question is, uh, which type of company is more pr uh, dominant in, in Europe? And there you have these figures from Eurofound. It says about 19% of companies in Europe are in the high investment, high involvement. It's hard to develop such companies. It's hard to make these kinds of investments, but still a quarter of uh, companies in Europe do this, uh, this kind of development. Somewhat more, 22% of them are in the low, low type of category. You don't want to be there, I think, I assume. Um, but you could see that the biggest category is those that have done a lot of investments, but do not have this uh, uh, right perspective of what they need to do to, to develop their uh, employees. So figures for Spain are about 22% are in the high investment, high involvement. But in Sweden, 45% of the companies are in this uh, segment. So there's still some catching up to do here. Um, is it important to be in uh, high investment, high involvement companies? And this is a result from the, the European Company Survey. And it shows that if you're in the high, high situation, from the well-being perspective, employees uh, rate themselves 35% better than if you're in the low, low situation. 15 to 15% uh, higher than those in the middle categories. And in performance um, uh, perspective, they uh, score up to 25% better than the low, low type of companies. And performance is profits, 
it's about employment situation, it's about the perspective to the future, uh, and it's uh, and, and type of investments. So you really want to be in that, that corner, you want to be in the high, high uh, type of companies. Um, so, and here comes a story of Industry 5.0. So the European Commission has understood that Industry 4.0 a policy that they support for more than 10 years is not delivering what they want. Industry 4.0 is too much focused on technology itself, and it's too much focused on profits. And you can easily, uh, if you only focus on those elements, fall into the low, low type of companies. And that's not what the European Commission wants. It's about humanidad. It's about the humans and it's about the development possibilities that you have as employees and as uh, workers and as graduates. So it's about human-centric, it's about resilience, agile, resilient, flexible, adaptable technologies, it's about sustainability, COP26, that has to be ingrained and uh, introduced into the companies itself. I was invited uh, by DG Research and Innovation, who wrote this note, to talk with them about this thing. And the only thing that I have as a comment is that human-centric is too much also focused on technology because it's about how can we adapt all these big technologies to the person itself. But are you going to be satisfied with just a technology that is fitted to yourself? I don't think so. I think you want to talk about these technologies. You want to be able to shape them and change them and, and develop them further. And that's what this uh, leading company, this CEO, also supported as idea. So it's not only about human-centric, it's also what I would say social-centric type, type of companies. So we want to come in, into industry 5.0, and it means a double transformation. It means a transformation of most companies in Europe to this industry 5.0 model, but it also means a transformation of the VET system to support this change toward industry 5.0. So to make industry 5.0 happen, we need, to much, uh, we need to have much more of these high, high type of companies. Companies need to become learning factories, training factories, and it requires this double trans uh, transition. So what is in this uh, double transi transition? So if we look from the perspective of the companies, they can help the VET system, the education system change itself uh, and pull uh, the, the, uh, co uh, the, the education system into this uh, transition. So within the companies, they need to invest into these micro -credential credentials. I think that uh, Sue has uh, shown how that is possible. But they need to develop that, and they need to uh, push forward the graduates in, in, and their employees in that direction. They need to develop also in lifelong learning, and they also need to understand which kind of uh, pedagogical approaches are needed to develop their workforce. And last element. These companies need to become experimenting grounds. We have an example in the Netherlands that we've created, it's called ShareHouse, in which we have made the VET uh, school itself the innovation center for the companies, the logistical com companies in the surroundings of this, uh, uh, of this school. The problem with these small SMEs is that they only have mo uh, uh, money to invest one time. And if this investment does not succeed, they, as a company, are gone. So we have offered and created the school and redeveloped it so that these companies can experiment within the school environment, so reduce their investment costs and have the students to train and develop with these technologies that are developed. So sharing, sharing this experience as, as, an, uh, as a training ground. So the industry can help the VET system uh, change, because I see a lot of these investments that uh, are done by the Ivy Tech. I think most of the, the schools here are saying, well, 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 well <laughs> where can I find the money? <laughs> because these are uh, serious investments that ha have to be done. So there needs to be a new relationship between education and industry. And then for the transformation of industry itself, education can help drive uh, these companies. And the first is, of course, that the graduates come into the companies with this new mindset. 
that they want to be coached, that they are coachable, and that they can develop themselves further into the future, into these new technologies and areas that are needed. Uh, they also need to understand that the workplace is about innovation. It's not about performing a task on technology. I think that Sue has also shown that these uh, students are rewriting code the whole time. The robots will take care of the work process. They will do, do the work, but somebody needs to reprogram, needs to find new ways to deal with the ex uh, technologies and the things that are present on the, work f on, 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 on the shop floor. And it's about kicking your colleague to develop himself somewhat more, not out of the company, but to progress and to develop himself or herself into a better uh, colleague and uh, pull the whole company forward into the new directions. And the last element is that the VET system can help the companies to understand what the learning and the training factory is about, what kind of standards are needed to become uh, a, tr a training factory. Uh, so to improve uh, these companies with really uh, underpinned uh, scientific, uh, significant kinds of approaches. So this is the message that I wanted to share from you, with you for the Beyond 4.0 project. But I still uh, understand that most of you are here, sitting here in the room thinking and looking at the big prize that is out there. We heard from the European Commission yesterday that they have 600 billion euros lying there for the countries to redevelop themselves. So there's going to be a statement about the VET system in the future, and it's about the funding that's possible that you should uh, grab also for the VET system. But I just wanted to tell you it's not only about the money. It's not only about the technology. It's about the mindset that the graduates have when they leave the school and come into the companies. If the companies, and that's the message that we want to have for this CEO, if the companies can have open-minded graduates that want to, to develop with the companies the technology that is needed for the future, then I think we have a better perspective than we uh, have Industry 5.0. Thank you.